Uh, I welcome you all uh, in this lecture on system model of combined rotary and translatory system uh, in this course on modeling and simulation of dynamic systems. So, uh, uh, previously we have seen the various uh, type of systems, I mean uh, independent systems such as mechanical system, electrical system. Uh, pneumatic, hydraulic and thermal system and we have seen the building blocks for modeling of these systems. Now, uh, from uh, this lecture onwards in few lectures we will be taking the combination of various types of these systems. So, in today's uh, this lecture I am going to deal with combination of uh, say translatory and rotary systems. So, basically it is a part of mechanical or uh, say uh, we can have a combination of mechanical and electrical uh, because uh, rotary motion are usually uh, coming through motor. So, I will be taking up one example where uh, we have a motor and motor is trying to uh, rotate something and then uh, 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 some disc and from that disc we are trying to pull a wire uh, something like that. Okay. So, here it is going to be a combination of translatory and rotary systems. So, uh, there are many mechanisms which converts rotary motion to translatory motion or vice versa. Okay. Uh, I can name uh, a few. Uh, which are used for this type of conversion say rack and pinion uh, arrangement, a very popular uh, way of converting the rotary motion into the translatory motion. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, many of the linear actuators are uh, basically uh, based on this rack and pinion arrangement, uh, where uh, we have a motor and uh, on the motor shaft a pinion is uh, uh, mounted and that pinion actually uh, uh, actuates a rack okay? and this way we can get the uh, uh, rotary motion into a translatory motion. There could be other examples say uh, shaft with lead screw, uh, all of us know uh, the example of lead screw uh, which is used in lathe and where basically we, uh, we want uh, uh, to have the translatory motion of the tool post. Fine. Uh, then uh, uh, there could be systems such as pulley and cable system. So, <coughs> sorry, uh, a pulley uh, mounted on a shaft and through that pulley uh, say a cable is wounded and unwounded and that type of system can be uh, considered uh, like this. Okay. Uh, other example could be uh, say uh, uh, cam follower system also, uh, although there the motion is not continuous, uh, motion could be intermittent motion, but again there also uh, we have a cam uh, which uh, usually have a rotary motion and the follower has got a translatory motion. So, that type of combination also comes into the picture. Okay. So, here uh, 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 we will be just looking at uh, the basic two models here that is the first model the rack and pinion system, how to model the rack and pinion system and how to model the pulley and cable system. Okay. And uh, here I would like one to uh, uh, you to emphasize that since we have already covered uh, the bond graph modeling of uh, dynamic systems. So, uh, try to correlate whatever I am going to discuss here with the respective bond graph model and uh, uh, that will give you a, a better feel of system modeling. So, uh, let us uh, look at this rack and pinion arrangement. Okay. So, here uh, we have got a pinion, there is a uh, bearing here and uh, uh, there is a torque being acting on this uh, pinion say uh, T in okay. and uh, uh, the, the uh, torque which is applied uh, say uh, at the periphery uh, uh, through periphery on this uh, rack uh, basically uh, is say T out 
okay and because of uh, this torque uh, this torque generates a, uh, a tangential force here and uh, that tangential force is responsible for the uh, motion of uh, the rack okay and uh, say there is a guide way here provided uh, for the uh, guidance of the uh, rack and uh, uh, sub, uh, they, uh, assume that there is uh, some friction here between uh, guide and the rack uh, that also we can model and everything is fixed on a certain base. So, as I said the pinion is supplied with input torque T in and it rotates at a velocity say theta dot. So, this shaft rotates at a velocity theta dot. Next, let the pinion polar moment of inertia be I p as it is indicated in figure and its radius be r. Okay. And the rack has mass m and it translates with a velocity say v. So, we are considering a mass uh, m of the rack and of course, uh, uh, there is a velocity v or say x derivative uh, in this say in this direction for the rack. Uh, now, as I said that we assume that there is a friction between say guide and the rack. So, let R be the friction resistance between the rack and the guide waist. So, uh, we uh, try to model uh, that uh, friction also and T out is the torque acting by pinion on the rack that is there. Okay. So, uh, with uh, this uh, definition of various parameters we can uh, say write system equations for the pinion and system equations for the rack separately and then we can combine these two system equations. Okay. So, uh, this will give us a better understanding of how uh, the rotary motions uh, or the dynamics of rotary motions are related with the dynamics of the translatory motion. So, the net torque acting uh, here on the pinion is T in minus T out and this torque uh, net torque is actually responsible for the angular acceleration of the pinion. Okay. So, this net torque will be equated to I into the angular acceleration where this I is uh, nothing but it is I p that is the moment of inertia of the pinion. Okay. So, this is basically I into alpha where alpha is the angular acceleration of the pinion. Okay. So, this way we can write this equation. Now, as you know that the rotation of pinion will result in translation, uh, translational velocity V of the rack okay. and this translatory velocity V can be given by R into omega where R is the radius of the pinion and omega is the angular velocity of the pinion. Okay. So, I can write this equation that is a torque in minus torque out is equal to I can substitute for oma, uh, here uh, omega uh, uh, in terms of V and R. So, here I have I by R dV by dt. Okay. So, this is how I can write the uh, equation for the pinion. Next, uh, let us look at equation for the rack. Okay. Now, uh, we can find out the force acting on the rack. As I said, T out is the torque uh, which is being uh, uh, acting uh, say here. Uh, so, I can uh, find out the force acting on the rack as T out divided by R. So, I divide the uh, output torque of the pinion by radius. So, I get the tangential force which is acting on the rack and I can uh, I assume the frictional force here to be uh, just like uh, that is uh, uh, the force uh, uh, acting on a damper okay? that is which is the force which is proportional to the velocity. So, here the frictional force is modeled as uh, R into V that is the velocity of the rack. Then I can write uh, the equation of a motion of the rack that is the net resultant force which is acting in the direction of motion here is T out by R minus R V 
and this net force is going to be responsible for the acceleration of the rack. Okay. So, this net force T out by R minus R V I am equating to mass into acceleration of the rack. Okay. So, this is T out by R minus R V is equal to mass into d V by d T. Okay. So, this is how I could uh, write it. Now, I can combine both of these equation that is equation of the pinion and equation of the rack. Okay, uh, uh, in order to write the system equation. Okay, so uh, substituting for uh, substituting for the T out. Okay, substituting for the T out here. This was our basic equation uh, for the pinion. T in minus T out is equal to I by R dV by dt, and this was equation for the rack. Okay, that is T out by R minus R V is equal to m dV by dt. So, if I substitute for T out here uh, from this equation into this equation, this is what I get T in minus this will be basically m dV by dt plus R V into R. So, m dV by dt plus R V into R is equal to I by R dV by dt. So, this expression is my combined expression. Okay. Uh, 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 I hope you understand this. So, this expression is combined expression uh, which I have got by eliminate, uh, eliminating this T out from the first and second equation. Okay. So, uh, now uh, I can further uh, write uh, or simplify this equation in terms of the input and output and this is how I do it. T in minus uh, uh, R uh, R V is equal to uh, here I by R is here. I can take this dV by dt common. So dV by dt I am taking common here. So here I by R and plus m R. This is the term which I am getting. Okay, and as my aim is to know say the velocity. Okay. So, I am writing this expression as dv by dt is equal to uh, now I can write T in minus R R V into R by I plus m R square. So, this is my system equation for this rack and pinion arrangement okay. and you can say that uh, this is the relationship between what is my input that is T in and what is my output that is the velocity. Okay, and it is a uh, first order uh, differential equation. All right. So, this way I can model the combination of rotary and translatory system okay. and uh, uh, here uh, uh, whatever I have explained to you uh, I have followed uh, the approach of the free body diagram. So, I have drawn the free body uh, for the pinion first and then I have drawn the free body for the rack and I have written the forces acting on these pinion and rack and then those uh, um, uh, forces I have equated uh, to uh, equal to the corresponding inertial terms okay? and this is how I got this equation. Fine. We can get the same equation in fact uh, using the bond graph. Okay. So, I just uh, uh, want to remind you of uh, the bond graph we have because we have already studied uh, this bond graph modeling. So, here uh, I can just draw the bond graph here say the torque in is here. So, I just write a source of effort element torque in here and uh, the, this pulley has got a moment of inertia, polar moment of inertia I p here. So, I attach here at a one junction and then your uh, rotary motion is being converted into the translatory motion. So, that I am able to do by implying uh, a transformer element here of modulus r and so I reach the velocity of the rack here and at this point I attach the inertia of the rack that is uh, uh, m here the mass of the rack and the friction between uh, the rack and the guide okay? and that I am say modeling here by uh, r uh, is equal to say r f. 
and I can causal here. Okay. So, uh, you can see if you causal it here, then uh, you can see that uh, uh, this I element comes under differential causality and this is usually the case. Why? Because here the two inertias are being related. Uh, so, you have a differential causality here, but I can uh, uh, say uh, simplify uh, this bond graph model uh, into say this form where I can write uh, the uh, uh, force acting as T in by R and that combined inertia of the rack and pinion I can write as m plus I p upon r square and of course, this is my uh, the friction at the uh, 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 guide, guide way. Okay? And then uh, of course, uh, you, you, uh, you can write the equation for this that is T in uh, uh, what are uh, the net forces act coming here. Okay. So, uh, T in uh, by R is the input and these are two are the output. So, if you just take a force balance here, you will be able to get the same differential equation this one. Okay. So, uh, I leave it as an exercise uh, to you here, uh, you can uh, uh, try to work it out that how uh, through bond graph modeling, you can derive the system equation for this system and uh, those of who, uh, you who are interested in this further and if you find difficulty in uh, doing this, you can look at uh, the intelligent mechatronic system uh, book written by me and my colleagues okay? and there we have uh, shown the detailed derivation of uh, uh, derivation of the system equations using bond graph which I have not discussed here. Next, let us take another example. Okay. As I promised, here I am taking the example of pulley and cable system. Okay. Now, in this pulley and cable system, you can see that there is a pulley okay, which is mounted on the ideal bearing and there is a massless rigid shaft. All right. And in this pulley, the wire is wound okay, and through this wire a mass is hanged okay. and for rotary motion of the pulley or the pulley is turned by uh, that is pulley is mounted on a shaft and the shaft is turned by a motor. Okay. So, uh, here uh, this circuit which you are seeing that is basically the circuit of the armature of the motor where there is a voltage source, there is an inductor and there is a resistor here. Okay. And of course, here uh, 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 when we are going to model the electrical circuit, we will be having a back EMF okay, uh, which will be uh, uh, coming uh, here coming uh, acting on the motor. Okay. So, let us see that here how can we model this rotary and translatory system. Okay. So, as I said, uh, I will be following the approach of the free body diagram here and I will give a clue for the bond graph modeling of this and uh, I will suggest that you derive the system equations yourself and tally the result. Okay. Um, then uh, with the uh, by doing so, you will appreciate the power of bond graph. So, as I said uh, in this pulley and cable system, say pulley is driven by a motor and say pulley has got a moment of inertia i and I am considering rope to be flexible. Okay. That is this rope is not a rigid rope, I am considering this rope to be a flexible rope. So, first let us model the motor. Okay. So, uh, uh, modeling of motor here we can use the Kirchhoff's voltage law. Okay. That is what is a Kirchhoff voltage law? That is in a loop the voltage 
across all the summation of the voltages across all the elements is going to be equal to 0. Okay. So, here, uh, here uh, this voltage uh, V which is being supplied this uh, is going to be equal to uh, what we have L d i by d t that is the voltage across uh, the inductor plus V b that is the back EMF plus the voltage across the resistor. Okay. So, this is how it is going to be and uh, I can further write this expression as V is equal to L d i by d t and the V b basically I am writing as mu into w okay, where the mu is the torque constant of the motor and omega is the angular speed of the motor shaft. Okay. So, uh, this uh, completes the modeling of this electrical circuit. Okay. Next, let us consider say modeling of say this block. Okay. So, here in order to model it you, you can see that I just take uh, say a coordinate system say y 1 here and y 2 here. Okay. So, this is nothing but a spring mass damper system type of uh, situation. So, let us draw the free body diagram for this mass. Now, in this mass the weight is acting here mg okay. and for this as the positive direction of motion here the force applied by the spring and damper are going to be this one. This uh, the force due to the spring is k y 1 minus y 2 where this is y 1 and this is the y 2 direction. So, the relative displacement will be y 1 minus y 2. So, this is k y 1 minus y 2 and the damping force will be c y 1 dot minus y 2 dot where c is the damping coefficient okay. that is the wire which I am modeling as a spring damper system. So, for the damping I am representing the damping coefficient of the wire as c. Now, here we can find out the net force or the total force acting in the direction of y 1 in this mass. Okay. So, the total force acting in this direction is going to be minus of this k y 1 minus y 2 minus of c y 1 dot minus y 2 and minus m g. Why I am putting minus? Because this force direction is opposite to my assumed positive sense direction that is y 1. Okay. And this complete uh, I am equating to m y 1 double dot. Okay. So, these are the total forces here and these forces are going to be responsible for acceleration of this mass and so that is why I am equating it to m y 1 double dot. Okay. Now, let us see the equation of motion for the pulley. Okay. Now, for pulley uh, uh, for pulley actually uh, uh, here uh, there is a little mistake this m should not be there okay this m should not be there so uh, now uh, the forces which are going to act on pulley these are this is my uh, uh, positive sense direction for y2 okay so for this positive sense direction the spring and damping forces are k y 2 minus y 1 here and c y 2 dot minus y 1 dot here for this one. Okay. And the force tangential force acting on the pulley will be the torque which is acting on the shaft divided by the radius of the pulley. Okay and say this is going to act in the uh, positive direction 
upward direction. So, to write the equation of motion of pulley, I find out the net tangential force acting on the pulley. Okay. So, net tangential force acting on the pulley will be T by R minus K y 2 minus y 1 minus C y 2 dot minus y 1 dot. Okay. So, this is my net tangential force acting on the pulley and then I can find out the torque acting on the pulley. Okay. So, what I do this net tangential force I multiply with the radius. Okay. So, I get the torque acting on the pulley and now this torque which I have got I equate to I omega dot. Okay, where I is the polar moment of inertia of the pulley and omega dot is the rotary acceleration of the pulley. Okay. So, this I can further simplify I omega dot is equal to I multiply this R inside. So, what I get T minus K R y 2 minus y 1 minus C R y 2 dot minus y 1 dot and this way I get the equation of motion for the pulley. Okay. So, if I summarize the first equation is basically the equation for the motor. Okay. So, this is the V is the input voltage supplied to the motor, this is the voltage drop because of the inductor and here uh, this is the back EMF and this term is basically the voltage drop across the resistor. And this equation is for my mass okay the equation for the mass that is the translatory motion of the mass and this expression is for the rotary motion of the pulley now here further what i have done is that the y2 i have represented as r omega okay uh, where um, uh, the omega is the rotary uh, uh, well, uh, ang uh, that is the angular velocity of the pulley. So, that uh, uh, omega is there I multiplied by r. So, I get the velocity term and that is same as that of y 2 dot. Okay. So, that I have done and this torque I have replaced by I into mu okay. because torque generated by motor is uh, given by the motor torque constant into I. So, now uh, in this way uh, we can write the system equation for combination of the translatory and rotary system and of course, in this case I have written also for the electrical circuit. Okay. And uh, those who are interested in bond graph, uh, I can just draw the bond graph model for this system and uh, uh, you can try it out the derivation of system equation using this bond graph. So, first I model the electrical portion where I have the voltage source, I have uh, the inductor, I have the resistor here. Remember in the bond graph the back EMF term will be coming over here. So, I model the model as motor as G y with the torque constant as mu which is represented by the modulus of the gyrator and then I come here. So, I have the uh, rotary inertia of the pulley. So, here this is my I uh, of the pulley. Remember this is the angular velocity port in the bond graph terminology. Okay. And after this rotary inertia is being convert uh, uh, sorry rotary motion is being converted into translatory motion. So, I put a transformer with modulus as r. So, here I have reached up to this velocity okay. and between this velocity and this velocity, velocity of the mass I can uh, will be decided by uh, the uh, inertia that is the mass here and between these two velocities I have got the spring mass damper system 
which is nothing but which represents the uh, uh, damping and uh, the uh, stiffness present in the wire. So, this way uh, I can uh, draw the bond graph model for this system, I can causal it also like this, like this, this way, this way and this way here, this way here, this way here, this way here and then I can causal I here flow, so effort here, so flow, so effort here, so flow, so effort here, effort here. Okay? So, this is how we can model the entire system and then uh, you can uh, uh, draw the system equation. This part is basically your motor and here is using this R, I am converting the rotary motion into the translatory motion. Okay? So, uh, this is how uh, it could be done and this I can write stiffness and this is my C which I have used in my terminology uh, in deriving the system equation. Okay? And here is the torque and uh, angular velocity of the motor and here this is uh, back EMF which I have been talking about and here this is the current. So, these are the effort and uh, flow variable. So, from here you can see that this back EMF Vb is mu times omega and this torque is mu times i. Okay? So, with this uh, I would like to wind up those who are interested uh, you can refer a very good book on mechatronics by Bolton and as well as you can refer our book intelligent mechatronic system modeling control and diagnosis published by Springer London. So, thank you.